Hello everybody, uh, today is haul time. I want to post a quick disclaimer before we get into this, because this is a long haul. Uh, basically this was my birthday month, so I got a bunch of stuff for my birthday, including like Amazon vouchers and stuff, so I treated myself to a couple of box sets. And uh, yes, I think in future, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I'll link to it below if not, where I gave my like channel update. So I'm going to be rejigging my publishing schedule, and that should allow me to kind of, with things like if I get another one of these box sets, it can have a video of its own, you know, so we won't have these super long hauls. And uh, potentially I'll break them up a little bit as well and do like a couple of hauls a month. Anyway, with that said, let's get to the haul, and you will be seeing Current Dane at the end of this video. Because I also have these. So yeah. Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my June 2018 book haul. So I'm going to get you started with a few bits I picked up over the weekend. So we went to a car boot sale, which I think I have to explain for American people. Because it's like a very British thing, I suppose. It's a bit like, like a garage sale or like a flea market or something like that. Except basically there'll be a field... And, you know, it will be advertised that there's going to be a car boot sale there. And then the sellers show up with a car. They pack their car full of stuff. And then they will, you know, put it on blankets or maybe like a paste table or something like that. And then uh, you'll have maybe like 100 odd sellers or whatever. And then you as a visitor just go around, wander through, and you can buy stuff from these people. So it's a good way for people to kind of clear out their houses. And it's a good way for me to find cheap books. So... With that in mind, I bought this little lot. I'll show you what I got. So, we'll start with this one. This is William Gibson, Virtual Light. I literally got this. I got this from a Polish guy. He also had Polish copies of Lord of the Rings. In like, he'd like specially bound them himself. They were awesome. But um, William Gibson wrote Neuromancer, which I read. I thought it was alright. I mean, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I think that's pretty typical of my relationship with sci-fi. But I do want to read more Gibson, because I understand he's like super influential and whatnot. So I thought I would give this a go. Okay, then I got some of the Enid Blyton... Uh, this one I already have by accident. Some of the Enid Blyton for grown-ups books. So I got Five Go Parenting, Five Go on a Strategy Away Day, and Five Go Gluten Free, which I'm currently reading because I have gone vegan in the last five days. So I thought uh, reading about them going gluten free would be entertaining. And it is entertaining, I can confirm that. While I was there from the same person, I also got Alex in Brexit Land by Levis Carroll. So this is obviously some politics about, you know, the Brexit vote and leave and all that. There's Trump, you know. There is Nigel Farage as the Cheshire Cat. And then I got these three beautiful editions of classics. So I actually already have this book, but not in this edition. So this is Treasure Island by Lewis, uh, by Robert Louis Stevenson. I got that confused there for a second. And these are illustrated as well. So you have like these little illustrations inside. And I also got Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. And Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. So I just thought these looked like beautiful little editions. I was like, if I'm going to read these classics, which I do, I want to read all three of these, then really I might as well read them in, you know, these really nice editions. And then they'll look great on my shelves as well. I hit myself in the face, in the nose today. I'm trying to tell whether my nose is swollen or not. It was really dumb. It was unwrapping this, right, and I was like taking it out of the elastic, like the plastic wrap or whatever, and I was pulling it, and I was going like, Ugh, and then it just went and hit me in the face. I'm gonna put Luna in it. She's gonna go inside this frame thingy. Anyway, I have a little uh, a card that somebody has sent me for my birthday, but it's it's not my birthday for like four more days, so. We'll wait until my birthday and then we'll have a bit of birthday haul, I guess. But I do have this from Wordery. And this is, this is Salvage, a ghost story by Duncan Ralston. So this is going to be my indie read for the month of July for Tarden Danes indie read along. And I've read some of uh, Ralston's stuff before and it's always been pretty good. So I'm excited about this. 
I have a little thing which I think might be a book. I don't know. Also, it's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Oh, sweet. It is Fortune Box Stories by Madeline Swan. So, Madeline is an author here on Booktube. She has signed it for me, as asked nicely. She says, Hello, Dane. Make sure that when the fairies invite you to the Gothic Ball, you bring a bottle of fizzy. Madeline Swan. And Madeline is... You can't see that at all. Let me try and focus that. Because this is a cool last title page. So this is from a Razorhead Press, who I assume are an indie press. You know you know how I am with indie authors. I mean, I can tell you straight away. Font is justified. There's no double spacing. So we are good there. I like the little chapter headings. Layout and everything is lovely on this thing. So, And obviously you've got the creepy ass cover. I'm going to read you the blurb of this one. Because this again, indie release. You should go ahead and get it. And check out Madeline here on Booktube as well. No one knows where or what Tower Limited Surprise Packages is. Or why it's sending gifts to complete strangers across the city. All they know is that each package is the best thing that's ever happened to them. Or the worst. In one box is a packet of seeds that allows you to grow your perfect date. In another, there's a cupcake that causes anyone who eats it to grow eyeballs all over their skin. There's also a parcel with a mousetrap that turns all your enemies tiny. Or you could receive your autobiography, which, when signed, makes your every thought famous. Or maybe even a key to a secret door that leads to another dimension where all your unfinished and abandoned projects exist. But with each package received comes both fortune and misfortune that will surely result in unexpected consequences. Like a season of episodes from the Twilight Zone or Friday the 13th the series comes a collection of dark and humorous stories from the premier British female author of Bizarro Fiction. So yeah, Fortune Box, Madeline Swan, I recommend checking that out. Okay, so if I sound and or look bunged up and have water watery eyes and a red nose today. It's because hay fever is a very real thing and I'm not very happy with it. But anyway, I have some books, so I'm going to show you these. So the first thing I want to show you actually, I guess it's not a book this, but I, I will show it in my haul anyway. This is uh, Lacuma magazine and it's a uh, like a vegan lifestyle kind of magazine. So it's got, um, you know, articles and stuff in there. It's got some recipes. Uh, oh, look at this. Raw blueberry cheesecake. And it's vegan. Very nice. What's also cool is it has like these fashion things where you've got the models are vegan. They're eating vegan food or trying vegan drinks and stuff in it. They're also wearing vegan clothes. And apparently the photographer's vegan as well. So that's all pretty cool. Um, and this was £3. I actually got, got it free with uh, the... It's called the Vegan Kind. It's like a... Uh, snack box, but I'm thinking about taking out like a subscription to this because it's pretty badass. So yes, and the other thing that I have The other thing that I have I'm gonna try and do this quickly because the battery on the camera's running out This was a birthday present for from Becca because it was my birthday yesterday. I turned 29 and uh, This is the vintage minis box set. So basically she asked me if there was anything in particular I wanted for my birthday and I was thinking about you know, she asked me if there are any books or anything, and I have a very specific wish list of books, but because I really enjoyed the Penguin Mini Moderns box set, I thought I would quite like to get the Vintage Minis as well. So she got me these, and I haven't opened them yet. We have a quote on the back from Virginia Woolf. There is no gate, no lock, no bolt that you can set up on the freedom of my mind. Yeah, I just really liked how the Penguin Mini Moderns have kind of introduced me to a bunch of new authors, you know. So I had a look at other box sets. So I had a look at other box sets, and this was the one with the best selection, I thought. I've actually already read one of them. So here we have it. Let's slide some out. So we have Race by Toni Morrison. Drinking by John Cheever. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I don't know. Eating by Nigella Lawson. We have Home by Sam and Rushdie. We have Summer by Laurie Lee. Jealousy by Marcel Proust. Babies by Anne Enright. Work by Joseph Heller. Love by Jeanette Winterson. Liberty by Virginia Woolf. Calm by Tim Parks. Motherhood by Helen Simpson. Psychedelics by Aldous Huxley. 
Desire by Haruki Murakami. This is actually the one that I've already read. Sisters by Louisa May Alcott. Language by Zaolo Guo, maybe? I don't know. Swimming by Roger Deakin. Fatherhood by Carl Ove Nausgaard. Depression by William Styron. And Death by Julian Barnes. So that's nice. <laughs> I like how it ends on death. A nice cheery positive note. And yeah, they're beautiful sort of rainbow spines as well. So, and yeah, I kind of, I, it just, I like the idea of reading all of these and then keeping the box set, you know. And there are some really interesting ones in here. I'm keen to read Nigella Lawson's one and see what, you know, she says about food and stuff. Especially since going vegan, it'd be interesting just to see her take on food and I assume it's like her, you know, philosophy behind eating, you know. What else we got? Proust. I've never read any Proust before, so I'm excited about that. Virginia Woolf. Now, I, will, I would have told you until recently that Mrs. Dalloway was my ho most hated book of all time. But I'm rereading it for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon and actually quite enjoying it. So I'm keen to read more Wolf and see what I actually think of her. Aldous Huxley, I mean, I've read Huxley before, but the fact that it's called Psychedelics. Uh, excuse me. I've read Huxley before, but the fact that it's called Psychedelics makes me excited. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the Depression one sounds interesting. They all sound interesting. I can't wait to get to these. So I will probably review these five at a time in, this, in the same way that I've been doing the Penguin Mini Moderns. And uh, we'll make a thing of it. And I may have got some Amazon vouchers for my birthday that I may have spent on another box set. Oops. Let is, let's do this little mini haul. So this is from Saki Books. And they've sent me a book before. They sent me a book. It was an anthology called Don't Panic, I'm Islamic. It was excellent. I've got my framing slightly wrong. There we go. You're not meant to be able to see the bathroom door, because who wants that? Do you know, I've got, I've been growing my beard again, and every time I grow my beard, my camera really struggles with the autofocus. It's a nightmare. Anyway. So yeah, this publisher sent me a book called Don't Panic, I'm Islamic, and they reached out to me and said, we've got a new book out, would you be interested? And it's called, And Then God Created the Middle East and Said, Let There Be Breaking News by Carl Remarks. So, as you can imagine, this caught my attention. We have such examples of the party of God. The other party of God. Here we go, it is basically full of things like this. So as you can imagine, this is my kind of book. Oh, I'm going to read you the blurb quickly, I guess. I think it's the, the blurb, it just has some um, quotes on it. You may wonder why the Middle East gets so much airtime. Regions of, the world, regions of the world were competing to host the apocalypse and the Middle East won. I disagreed with the idea that reality has become too strange to satirise. Then I read that Bin Laden was radicalised by Shakespeare. Meanwhile, Iraq seems to be invading itself for the oil. Bringing together the wildly wry observations and sketches of online sensation Carl Remarks, this hilarious collection proudly presents views you're guaranteed not to hear on the news. Today I have this! And I know what it is. It is my birthday present to myself. Basically, both of my parents got me some Amazon vouchers, and so I put those towards this, and so I ended up, this cost me about 25 pounds after applying the vouchers, which is, what, $38, something like that. I've only ever seen this online as well. I've never seen this in person. Oh. Oh. So this is the uh, Penguin Classics, the Little Black Classics box set. On the back here we have a quote. All nations, colours, barbarisms, civilizations, languages. That's from number 10, but it doesn't say what number 10 is. Let's have a look. What is number 10? <laughs> it's a beast. So there are 80 in this collection. I will, uh, I will talk you through what we've got. It's going to take me like half an hour to mark all these as currently reading on Goodreads. Here's what it looks like without the uh, cellophane. I think I'm going to have to take a photo of all of my box sets together and see what they look like. How is the best way for me to do this? I don't even know. Alright. So we have 
Giovanni Boccaccio, Mrs. Rosie and the Priest. I apologize in advance for butchering all these names. Gerard Manley Hopkins as Kingfisher's Catch Fire. We have uh, Anonymous, the Saga of Gunlaug Serpent Tongue. We have Thomas De Quincey on Murder Considered as One of the Fine Arts. Friedrich Nietzsche, Aphorisms on Love and Hate. John Ruskin, Traffic. Pooh Songling, Wailing Ghosts. Jonathan Swift, A Modest Proposal. Anonymous again, Three Tang Dynasty Poets. I appreciate these aren't getting particularly well focused, but what the hey, there is 80. I cannot manually focus 80 of them. We'll be here all week, never mind all day. Jesus. Walt Whitman on the beach at night alone. Maybe if I do it from further away. Kenko, a cup of sake beneath the cherry trees. Balthazar Gresian, how to use your enemies. John Keats, the eve of St. Agnes. Thomas Hardy, Woman Much Missed. Guy de Maupassant, Femme Fatale. Studied some of his short stories at uni, so that's interesting. One thing I already have noticed. Some of these titles are like all capitalised and some aren't. I'll show you an example. So this is when it, where it's capitalised properly. Marco Polo, Travels in the Land of Serpents and Pearls. Suetonius, Caligula. Apollonius of Rhodes, Jason and Medea. Robert Louis Stevenson, Olala, oh, what's my name? Olala, oh, what's my name? Sorry, I got distracted. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, The Communist Manifesto. Petronius, Trimalchio's Feast. Johann Peter Hebel, How a Ghastly Story Was Brought to Light by a Common or Garden Butcher's Dog. Hans Christian Andersen, The Tinderbox. Rudyard Kipling, The Gate of the Hundred Sorrows. Dante, Circles of Hell. Met Henry Mayhew of Street Piemen, Pieman. Of Street Pieman, as in men who sell pies. How did I think it was Piemen? Hafez, The Nightingale's a Drunk. Here we go. That's not capitalised, look. And then we go back to Geoffrey Chaucer, The Wife of Bath where it is capitalized. Another thing I had seen people complain about this as well is that when you have them all sort of like this, they don't actually all perfectly line up as well, the, the spines. But I don't mind too much about that. We have Michael de Mont... Oh, sorry. We have Michel de Montaigne, how we weep and laugh at the same thing. Thomas Nash, the terrors of the night. Edgar Allan Poe, the telltale heart. Mary Kingsley, a hippo banquet. Jane Austen, The Beautiful Cassandra. We have Anton Chekhov, Gooseberries. Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Well, They Are Gone, and Here Must I Remain. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Sketchy, Doubtful, Incomplete Jottings. Charles Dickens, The Great Wingleberry Jewel. Herman Melville, The Maldive Shark. Elizabeth Gaskell, The Old Nurse's Story. Nikolai Leskov, The Steel Flea. Honoré de Balzac, The Atheist's Mass. Charlotte Perkins Gilman, The Yellow Wallpaper. C.P. Cavafri, Remember Body. Fyodor Dostoevsky, The Meek One. Gustav Flaubert, A Simple Heart. It's like a who's who in literature, isn't it? Nikolai Gogol, The Nose. Samuel Pepys, The Great Fire of London. Edith Wharton, The Reckoning. Henry James, The Figure in the Carpet. Wilfred Owen, Anthem for Doomed Youth. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, My Dearest Father. Plato, Socrates Defense. Christina Rossetti, Goblin Market. Then we have Anonymous again, Sinbad the Sailor. Sophocles, Antigone. Ryan Asuki, Atkuta Goa. 
Ryunosuke Akutagawa, The Life of a Stupid Man. Leo, Tol Leo Tolstoy, How Much Land Does a Man Need? Georgi Vasari, Leonardo da Vinci. Oscar Wilde, Lord Arthur Savile's Crime. It's actually making me feel good about myself because at least about between five and ten of these so far will be definite rereads for me, so that's always good. Shen Fu, The Old Man and the Moon. Aesop, The Dolphins, The Whales and the Gudgeon. Matsuo Basho, Lips Too Chilled. Emily Bronte, The Night is Darkening Around Me. Joseph Conrad, Tomorrow. Richard Hakloit, The Voyage of Sir Francis Drake Around the Whole Globe. Sure to annoy the flat earth, is that one. Kate Chopin, A Pair of Silk Stockings. Charles Darwin, It Was Snowing Butterflies. Brothers Grimm, The Robber Bridegroom. Catalyst, I Hate and I Love. Homer, Circe and the Cyclops. Which is particularly relevant at the moment. Obviously, Madeline Miller. Shout out to Madeline Miller. Not about that. D. H. Lawrence, Il Duro. Catherine Mansfield, Miss Brill. Ovid, The Fall of Icarus. Sappho, Come Close. Ivan Turgenev, Kazian from the Beautiful Lands. Virgil, O Cruel Alexis. H. G. Wells, A Slip Under the Microscope. This random bit of like printing <laughs> that's a, bit of a spare bit of book that has been included, but all right then. Herodotus, The Madness of Cambyses. Then we have two anonymous ones. We have Speaking of Siva and the Dhammapada, or Dhammapada, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the uh, Buddhist text. So yes, I am excited about this. So I'm gonna finish my Penguin Mini Moderns. Then I'm gonna probably do my Vintage Moderns. And then I am going to go through this. So look forward to this because there'll be lots of reviews and stuff. But yeah, on that note, got a bit of a sore throat now and it's hot in here. I'm gonna, gonna go and take some photos. We'll go for it. Do you like my t-shirt by the way? Eat fruit, not friends. Um, I have been away for a few days. I went to Berlin. There will be a separate video about that. I'll probably link to it below. Am I in focus? It's very hard to tell whether I'm in focus because I go out of focus when I lean in to see whether I'm in focus. Mm. All right, I, I accidentally knocked the microphone, I guess. So I don't know how much of the previous clip even worked, but whatever, we'll continue to go with it. So yeah, this is the future of healthcare, humans and machines partnering for better outcomes by Emmanuel Fombo, said that wrong, by Emmanuel Fombu MD, MBA. Here he is on the back cover. So yeah, here's my client. He lives in New York. Well, I should go and visit him at some point, really. And um, yeah, non-fiction. I'm going to read you the blurb. I should point out as well, it's available in this lovely paperback edition. It's also available in the ebook, and the hardcover edition is coming soon as well. So very exciting. Global healthcare is at a crossroads. We live in a world where data can help us make more informed decisions about how to navigate traffic, who to date, what to buy, who to network with, and how to better manage our finances. But when it comes to our personal health and wellness, we have no roadmap. We need something to show us where we are in terms of our health, with landmarks for risks and opportunities, a GPS that makes it easier to move toward our personal health goals, a new way to look at health and life. The future of healthcare is coming. This is what it looks like. And we have the bio here. so. Emmanuel Fombu, MD, MBA, is a physician, author, speaker, and healthcare executive turned Silicon Valley entrepreneur. The 2017 winner of the prestigious New York City Health Business Leaders Boldest Digital Health Influencer Award, Dr. Fombu holds an MBA from Cornell University's Johnson School of Business and a certification on... Jesus Christ and a certification on artificial intelligence from MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab. It's like bloody rush hour outside, what's going on? He serves as an external advisory board member on the Massachusetts Institute of Technology's MIT Nano Project and lives in New York City. And uh, yeah, this is cool because this is the first time I've held the physical copy in my hand. Hello, I have a parcel and this is from, uh, it said on the front, Noir Press from Nottingham. So I will open it up. What is? 
That's quite a cute little bit. Winner of the BBC Book of the Year, The Last Day by Jaroslav Malnikas. This is another contemporary Lithuanian classic. So I read one of these from Noir Press recently, actually. Well, a year or two ago. It was called Breathing Into Marble by Laura Sendjuic or something. That is a pretty good guess, considering, I mean, I have over, like, 1,500 books or whatever, so I think that was pretty close. I'm, I'm sure it was Laura, and then her surname began with C and ended in, like, I-U-K. Anyway, that's not this person. This is Jaroslavas Melnikas. Yeah, I said his name better that time. Jaroslavas Melnikas is a Lithuanian of Ukrainian descent. He studied at Lvov University and at the uh, M. Gorky Institute of Literature in Moscow. He has written six books of fiction and a collection of philosophical essays in Lithuanian, as well as several books of poetry and prose in Ukrainian and a novel in French. He is winner of the BBC Book of the Year for the stories in this collection. That's all you need to know. I have a parcel and I think I know who it's from. I think it might be from a booktube friend. Okay, so here I have me a copy of Indisputably Doris by Charles Heathcote. So I read Our Doris, which is the first book in this series. This is book two. I don't think, there's no book three yet, but hopefully, I know Charlie is working on it. Charlie is also here on Booktube. I actually really enjoyed the first book of this. It was uh, it's my top indie book of the year, and it made it into my top overall books of Q2. It was actually my second favourite book of Q2. So... I'm very excited about reading this, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, the way we did this as well is that I sent Charlie a copy of Driven, which is one of my books, and he sent me this in like a little book swap. So, thank you, Charlie. Looking forward to it. All right, and the last things for this haul. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's two things. How exciting. All right, so the first of these, this is actually written by a booktuber, so I might do this for the indie read-along. I think I've got three indie books at the moment now. But this is Cam C. Wolf from Wolf Shop Publishing. And of course, it's Bob's and Virgin, which is a parody of Milk and Honey, which I haven't read because I know I'm not going to like Milk and Honey because the people, the people who read and enjoy Milk and Honey are the people who preface their reviews by being like, I'm not much of a poetry reader, but see, I am a poetry reader, which makes me think I'm not going to like it. However, I do like the idea of Bob's and Virgin. Hmm. This is the uncapitalized journey of thirsty Instagrammers working tirelessly to make girls show their bobs and vagine. This is a collection of the lust, the anger, the butts, the bobs. This is actually pretty sad and gross and just a little bit funny. And the other thing isn't necessarily a traditional book. It's a cookbook. It's a cookbook. Now, I don't normally do cookbooks. However, I wanted to get this. This is the Bosch cookbook. Simple recipes, amazing food, all plants. A really great cookbook with over 140 recipes to use every day, hairy bikers. And yeah, the Bosch are two northern lads and friends. And yeah, it's plant-based, it's vegan recipes. So it's a vegan cookbook basically, but it's the one that like people generally say is one of the best. I mean, it does look good. Oh, oh, oh. look, it's all vegan. And it's the, the book itself smells good. So I might even make myself one of these later. And I'm probably going to be doing, I think I said in my update video, I'm probably going to start doing reading vlogs. And as part of that, I might also start showing you some of the food that I make as well. So yes. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And if so, which ones you've read. <laughs> People walking past again. Hit subscribe. Where did I get to? Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.